Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming With Me, Tony Mo. And today we're here to discuss my favorite RPG of the last generation. Of course, I want you guys to get involved and let me know what your favorite RPG of the last generation is in the comments section below. Whatever it may be, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, a game that I've probably never even heard of possibly. Let me know in the comments section below. I definitely want to hear from you guys. But when it all came down to it, I did a lot of things to help me decide what game I was going to choose. But deep in my heart, I always knew it was going to be Dark Souls. Dark Souls, to me, just is one of the greatest RPGs of all time. It truly is. And we've seen so many great ones over the last generation. From the Mass Effect series, to Elder Scrolls, to the recent release Nino Kuni, uh, to more traditional, you know, sort of turn-based RPGs like Final Fantasy, to The Witcher 2, to... Dark Souls and Demon Souls. There's just been so many role-playing games. It's insane. I mean, you could probably have an entire game catalog of more than 100 games of just role-playing games. Really great role-playing games, nonetheless. Not a bunch of crappy ones. Some genuinely awesome titles over the last generation. So it was a bit difficult to choose what my all-time favorite game of was, favorite game of the last generation was, but at the same time, it really wasn't. At the end of the day, it came down to two titles for me, The Witcher 2 and Dark Souls. And I kind of always knew it was going to be Dark Souls. There's just been something about the game that has always pulled me in, that has kept me coming back over and over again. But there are some things that Dark Souls and The Witcher 2 have in common. As a whole, I think they sort of feature the three best examples of, you know, the the three primary elements of an RPG. You have your story, you have your combat, uh, and, you know, your combat and your gameplay, and then you have... The actual, like, world itself that you're in, you know, the, the world of Lordran and all of its different elements in Dark Souls and Temeria inside of The Witcher 2. And I think that both of these games do all of those elements very, very well. The combat, specifically, is something that Dark Souls and The Witcher 2 excel at, greater than just about any other RPG on the market, in my opinion. Specifically when we talk about, about action RPGs, you know, real time, no, not turn-based or anything like that. Skyrim, while well, a lot of people I know... Skyrim, they love it to death. I love Skyrim to death, too. I love the Elder Scrolls series in general. Oblivion was one of my favorite games. I'm a big fan of Morrowind to this day, and Skyrim was fantastic. But the one thing that has always bothered me about all of the titles in the Elder Scrolls series has been the lack of actually good combat. I think that in the next Elder Scrolls game, they hopefully they revamp the combat system. I really do, because... In games like Dark Souls, Dark Souls is it's hard. There is no difficulty setting. It's just always hard, right? And the combat is extremely deep. It's extremely rewarding, and it has a lot of elements to it. Parrying and dodging and backstabbing. And when you understand all those elements and put them together, you become much better at the game. And then you still have a ways to go. The same thing goes for The Witcher. There's a lot of preparation involved in, in pre-combat, whether it be taking potions or different things to increase your combat skills whilst you're in combat, as well as the parrying mechanic, the dodge mechanic, all of the separate mechanics that make up The Witcher 2's combat system, those are the elements that make both of these games have such outstanding combat systems. And it also allows you to, to the game to actually have a sense of difficulty, rather than just, oh, the monsters have more health now, which is an issue that the Elder Scrolls series has always had. You turn up the difficulty, the monsters just, they have more health, that's it. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, have to, you have to be better at pairing, you have to be better at dodging. In Dark Souls, you can take on enemies, while it may require an extremely large amount of time, an extremely large amount of patience and skill, you can often take on enemies that you probably shouldn't be fighting just yet with just some skill. There's enemies in Dark Souls that will one-shot you instantly, but if you know how to dodge and roll and make proper use of all of your different materials and your elements and your... You know, your, your potions and your buffs, you can be successful against some truly terrifying enemies that someone who is new to the game may not be able to. That's what, to me, makes Dark Souls so special. There's just so much to the game. There's so much to learn. There's so much to discover. It's one of the few games that I have not bothered in any way to read a strategy guide or really get any sort of help from anyone else because I like the sense of discovery, the sense of mystery that the game offers. And that carries into its story and its world. To me, the Dark Souls world is one of the most fascinating and mysterious worlds in a role-playing game to date. There's just so much that we don't know about the Dark Souls universe. It's left for us to just kind of interpret in our own way, to figure out in our to figure out our in our own time, in our own means. The game doesn't really give you a lot directly. You run into NPCs that will just kind of talk strangely about different covenants and things of this sort. There's just <laughs> there's so much to to not know about Dark Souls. It's just what makes the world so, that much more fascinating that much more mysterious as i said and it to me it's one of the most intriguing and interesting aspects of the entire game 
And of course, that carries over, you know, that's that's just, it combines the story and the gameplay. They're both, I'm sorry, the story and the world are both so mysterious. There's just so little to know about both sides. Uh, the entire time you're walking through, you know, through Lordran, and again, all of the different sort of places and locations inside of Dark Souls, while it should all feel very familiar, I mean, you're fighting skeletons and monsters and dragons, it all feels so so new, so fresh, so unfamiliar. You know, not once have you ever been like, oh man, I fought skeletons a million times in RPGs before. There's just something about Dark Souls that manages to feel so fresh and new and different. I, I think it just has to do with that whole sense of mystery that the game invokes at every single corner. The locations and, and you know, the world and the world design in Dark Souls is just very dark and very mysterious. I keep saying mysterious, but it's just true. It, it really is. And that's what pulls me back in. Dark Souls is a game that I've started over more times than any other game I can I can think of. I probably have over 20 characters I've started on Dark Souls. This is probably my 21st. I actually, when I picked up the P PC version today, I, just, I had decided to make this video in advance and then saw that the PC version was on sale. I said, oh, I'll start a brand new character and I'll use that footage actually. Uh, you know, for the for the video. So this is like my 21st character, and I have no problem starting the game from scratch for some reason. You know, I could be 10 seconds from the end of the game, and I don't mind starting over. There's just something about the combat and, you know, the locations in the world that is always interesting to me. It never gets old. It never gets boring. Whereas, as much as I love Skyrim, and I have like 200 hours in Skyrim, don't get me wrong, probably more than that now, actually, I cannot bring myself to start a new game i just always play the same character i keep exploring i keep killing things as the same character starting new to me is just like the most boring thing i can possibly do or skyrim just doesn't seem to function that way there's i'm sorry dark souls doesn't seem to function that way for me it's just always gratifying no matter how many times i start from the beginning and push my way to the middle or near the end and then start over again i just i always enjoy it it's it's a strange thing but that is why i chose dark souls as my favorite rpg of the last generation so as I said, I want you guys to let me know what your favorite RPG of the last generation was in the comment section below. The last thing that I find kind of funny is that I'm calling Dark Souls my favorite RPG of the last generation. Yet we're going to see the release of Dark Souls 2 next year, once again on the last generation. Dark Souls 2 is going to be releasing simultaneously for the PC, the Xbox 360, and the PlayStation 3 early next year. And that's going to be awesome, because it's kind of nice to see that there are developers and publishers who still think, you know, whether it's because they started the development of the game and they couldn't really transition to the next gen, but they understand that there are still people who are going to be playing on the last gen consoles. There are still people like myself who own next gen consoles who still appreciate that there are still games being released on the last gen and still plan on playing them. Dark Souls 2 is something I'm looking to looking forward to very much. It's probably, in my opinion, going to be one of the last great role-playing games of the last generation. And again, that's very funny. <laughs> Considering I'm calling Dark Souls the, my favorite RPG of the last generation. So we'll see. When Dark Souls 2 releases next year, if my opinion changes, and maybe I'll have to make a video reinstating what my actual favorite RPG of the last generation is. Because who knows? Maybe it'll become Dark Souls 2. It's going to be it for me, guys. It's been Tony Moe, and I will see you in the next one.